Legal advice because there's always small print. We must remind you that the health advice given on this show is general advice and that for any specific condition you must seek the help and guidance of your doctor or a professional medical advisor before commencing any treatment or any kind of dietary regime. And stress is our topic today. We all have it, we all have to cope with it, but there are various ways in which we can be helped, whether it's financial stress, pressure of a relationship, a divorce, grief, so many causes. Modern living creates stress in so many ways and produces actual physical symptoms. Our panel of experts, as ever, Leonie Amon, hello, Kate Moss, I'm Jeremy Kenton, Juliet Nosk, and Liz Nagel. And we're all from different medical disciplines, alternative and complementary. Stress, what can we do? What would be the biggest thing for me, I'd have thought, would be yoga. Uh, yeah, well, absolutely. Yoga can definitely um, help you de-stress. What yoga does with, uh, with the breathing exercises, well, basically, when we're in yoga, we're, um, you're synchronizing breath with movement. So we're moving and we're synchronizing the breath. And what we're doing is we're actually tapping into what's called the parasympathetic nervous system. So we generally live with sympathetic, fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And with yoga, the more you do yoga, the more you're coming into that deep, peaceful part of, of your... Of your the vegetative your, function. Yes, well, yeah. what is it, vegetative? Not just <laughs> yes. the no, just right. Right. Vegetative And the more you function. do that in yeah. yoga, then the idea is that you can then, you're going to tap into that, and the more you tap into that, the more you're going to then embody that in your everyday life. So when you're outside of the yoga class, hopefully you're able to come back to that deeper, peace, more peaceful place. And there are so many different types of yoga. I mean, you do one type oh, of yoga, yes, you do another type of yoga. Indeed. Or do you both do the same type of yoga? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no. What do you do? Yeah, you do? I do it vinyasa, like a slow vinyasa mm. yoga. Yeah, um, mine's more hatha, she, trained with Shiva Nam. Okay, okay. So, but I do do some vinyasa as well. Can you explain the difference? We haven't got a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Sounds, yeah, Sounds so. really impressive. So with the Hatha, um, there's more, um, you're doing a posture and then you come back into Shavasana, which is a, a lying down on the floor, arms out to the side, feet hip width apart. And so there's more movement and then still oh, there's movement stillness. Yes, yeah, sorry, is that what they call the mm -hmm. dead man pose? Yes, course pose, course indeed, course. yeah, Shavasana. And then with vinyasa, vinyasa means um, that the movement with the breath, so you're flowing from posture to posture. Um, so rather, rather than the stillness in between, it's a continual flow of movement with breath. Right, so breathing is an incredibly important thing to do, but what other approaches can people take? I mean, from the naturopathic approach, what can people do? To de-stress. To de-stress. Well, um, I see suppose uh, breathing again from a naturopathic point of view breath is so important and uh, we don't get enough oxygen into us and, and there's there's more to stress than um, just work or, or relationships and you know sometimes stress can be a good thing um, but we're, we're talking about the not so good aspects of stress now um, herb, herbal medicine is really good and homeopathy the H word that everybody The H word. Now you've got this little blue I've box. Got this little here. blue box here, which is just um, a kind of a emergency medical box, or is it standard? emergency? It's an emergency <coughs> kind of introductory box, um, and it, it basically has lots of different little bottles of pills in. So homeopathy works on the basis of light curing light. It works on that. Um, yes, like, cure is like. Um, herbal medicine would work on a similar basis. Uh, homeopathy works um, from the point of view of um, just the smallest dose, in fact, a dose which is almost non-existent in, in water. Because um, some people say, without being overly critical, I'm, I'm a great believer in homeopathy, so don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. some people would say it would be like getting a grain of salt throwing it in the Atlantic, picking it up if it ever arrived in the Pacific and giving it to somebody saying that's going to help you. Yes. How does it work? 
Well, I'm not a physicist, and I'm not even a homeopath. I'm more of a herbalist, but I do use homeopathy, and I have studied it a little bit. Um, how does it work? It works using energy. Um, if you um, if you think of something like um, you know, the way sometimes you you might think of your friend who lives in Australia, and they you know next minute you get a message from yeah. them. It, it, it's that instant, it, it, it's energy, it's like biomedicine, it, it's... Yeah, and I was going to say biofeedback, because kinesiology works with biofeedback <coughs> mechanisms, so an example with that is the sunflowers in France, they all turn and follow the sunshine, don't yeah. they? That's called the biofeedback yeah. communication, when the sun, sunflowers... Phototropic response. Yes. So with kinesiology, you're working on the feedback from, from the organism, and, and often you're asking questions that... You don't ask out loud. You're putting um, a, a sample on on the patient, and then you're testing the muscles. So the organism is associating with what you're putting on on them. So the patient, being the organism, is is picking up on what you place on them, and then responds. The body responds, tightening or weakening muscles to tell you whether they are um, <clears throat> good for the individual or not so good for the individual. And the thing is, though, that sometimes the stress, it can be due to chemical imbalance, such as serotonin levels, which is why the normal orthodox approach will be to either boost those serotonin levels or reduce them, or sometimes putting patients on antidepressants. How do you... Stress, stress factors. So right. it's making an analysis, really, of yeah. what is stressing. But if it's a chemical imbalance... Well, quite often the chemical imbalance the comes from a, from a physical or an emotional imbalance in the body. So mm. if you're under emotional stress, it will cause a biochemical imbalance right. within the body. I was reading something really interesting um, <clears throat> about uh, acupuncture. And um, acupuncture is also really good for, for, for stress. But serotonin, what we think of serotonin as being uh, a hormone that affects the brain, but um, actually, it's a hormone that uh, is created in the digestive system. So a lot of uh, um, chemistry that is upset in the head or in the brain is actually upset because of the, the digestive system. Right, it's so is that balance. with... In terms of food intake, people's food that they eat, poor diet, it's or poor diet, or it can, it, 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 yeah, generally speaking, it's poor diet, or it can be a lack of probiotics mainly. Right. Well, what do you mean by probiotics? Probiotics are the bacteria that right. that live naturally yeah. in our in our bowel. Right, because we have natural intestinal flora, which are there to help with the digestive process. Mm -hmm. So where there are too many of them, they're sort of taking over. Yeah. The probiotic takeover, yeah. or a lack of probiotic. Yeah, but they, the bad they probiotics are there. No, no, no. All probiotics. Well, the probiotics are good. Right. Okay. It's when you get bacterial activity, the well, wrong type of bacteria. Right. Okay. Is this, can this lead on to ulcers and you know, stomach ulcers and things? All that. Kind yes, of and IBS balance. and irritable bowel no, syndrome. No, no. But and, stomach um, ulcer can sometimes come about as a result of the presence of a particular bacteria called Helicobacter pylori, which was only discovered back in the sixties. And up until then, lots of people were diagnosed with having an ulcer, and it wasn't. It was a bacterial infection. The appropriate antibacterial. Mm -hmm. And bang, symptoms all gone. I mean, in medical terms, they usually um, um, medicate with serotonin uptake, mm -hmm. SSRIs, I think they're called. Yeah. Um, and like Prozac and, and drugs like that. Um, but what happens is that when, and they, and they, they treat things like um, irritable bowel um, syndrome with Prozac now because uh, of the receptors in the brain but then when the people come off the SSRIs the the digestive system hasn't been uh -huh. uh, touched at all yeah. mm -hmm. and hasn't been medicated or hasn't been treated and and so the symptoms come back immediately right. so what we need to do when we're looking at stress is see mm -hmm. what is causing it is it a digestive issue is it an outside issue? Is it about our thoughts and how our thoughts are affecting us? 
or how we think they're uh, allowing them. stress affects people in very different ways, doesn't it? I mean, when I get stressed, I have sort of muscle contractions in my neck and shoulders. I love to see my masseuse or go and see a physiotherapist for a good treatment. And I, I'm a, uh, a deep tissue masseuse as well, so I see a lot of people that come from work and have work stress. And they might be on the phone all the, all the day or on the computer, you know, with the, the mouse. And, um, and they quite often will have the right shoulder and neck all contracted. Yeah, of course, there and, is uh, physical stress and <clears throat> emotional stress. What would you do? Well, one, 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 one influence is the other, in as much as the physical side can affect the emotion, but also the emotional side can affect the, the physical. I mean, you've only got to look at some people, and they come in to see somebody like me, because I'm an osteopath, and they say, I've got a pain in the neck. When you examine them, there's nothing wrong with the neck. The pain in the neck is their wife, or their husband, or their children, or their job. <laughs> yeah. So all the stress factors all come in together. You know. So it's more than just the physical side. Mm. Well, I work a lot with the emotional liberation techniques as well, because, um, as you say, a lot of the stress is, is down to emotional stress. And um, you sort of hold on to it, and quite often we don't know how to identify what those emotions are. We might be feeling anger and it's affecting the stomach. We could be feeling... Um, anxiety and it's sort of in the chest and you think your heart's sort of palpitating or stopping sometimes you know people have um, different kind of symptoms of stress in different parts of the body don't they but um, they don't know what those symptoms represent or what the feeling is quite often they don't even know how to identify the, the feeling that they have uh, with from a to stress. physiological point of view the reason <clears throat> it's going on in our body is that your body is preparing itself to either do something about it or run away what's called the fight or flight mechanism so your pupils get bigger your heart rate increases you start to sweat the bowel evacuates which we've talked about before <laughs> <laughs> and you prepare yourself to run off. So if you've got the saber-toothed tiger coming up to a caveman, even though they never existed at the same time, but saber-toothed tiger, caveman, or tax man, yes. uh, <laughs> office worker, um, he thinks, oh my God, do I run away and prepare myself to run away, or do I face up to it? The mm -hmm. fight or flight mechanism. Mm -hmm. And most of this, well, a lot of, a lot of these things are created by what you might call fear, false evidence appearing real. So the saber-toothed tiger, like you yeah. said, didn't actually exist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when Tax man does. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He exists, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, they, they say that, uh, you know, in some, in some areas they say that the thought is, is very powerful and it all comes back to the thought. And one of the most common problems in the world at the moment is actually anxiety, which most people, if not all people, suffer from. Mm which is the fear of what might happen in the future or what's going to happen or what could happen and then what has happened in the past and what you didn't do or what you should have done or hmm. all these things and I have more and more clients coming in to my door being recommended by, uh, by their doctors to take up yoga or take up meditation um, saying you know they've come to uh, relieve themselves and it, a lot of it is around the thoughts and these imaginings of things that might happen yeah. or did happen. But, and that's, that's it, like, past experience. Yeah. No, I was going to say, well, the other <clears> thing too <throat> that we obviously teach in yoga is about being in the present moment right? yes, and not exactly. living with the worry of the future <clears throat> or the, you know, the stress and the regret of the past because then you're not actually presently here. You're in this world of not reality. Mm. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. Do you know what I mean, yeah, the tax man's probably going to come at some point. Yeah. But you don't know when. He does. So why you well, I'm sure <laughs> yeah. he does, you know, and things happen, but we don't know what's going to happen. So mm. why get ourselves stressed and worried about stuff that we don't know is going to actually yeah. happen? It's you know so. And the classic thing is it's a bit like asking somebody, would you drive your car forward, constantly looking in the rear view mirror? Mm. No, because you're going to crash. <laughs> And that's what that's people do. Yeah. But it's easier said than done. Of course. It's much easier mm -hmm. said than done. As human beings, we tend to repeat our stories, don't we? If something bad has happened during the week, like someone drove into the back of us, or you know, that becomes your story for the week, and every time you're telling it, you're adding new drama to it, and you, yeah. know, you, want, you want the next person to be like, oh dear, that's awful, gosh, I can't believe that happened. So you're, you're actually just adding on all these extra effects. But is that because stress. people want sympathy? I suppose they're seeking some yeah. kind of acknowledgement of, of what they've been through, but mm. um, it doesn't probably help the individual themselves because they're staying in that past experience and they're carrying that. I mean, they might actually have a neck injury if they've been driven into it. Mm. Yeah. That, that was just an example, I and mean, it could be a separation from 
from a relationship, it could be children leaving home, I mean there's all sorts of, um, it could be an exam that you've got, you know, all sorts of different stresses. And it's like what you were saying, Julia, it's, <clears throat> you know, it, 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 it isn't easy, but um, the more you do it, the easier yeah. it gets. So yeah. it is a question of just always bringing yourself back into the present moment and, and not looking in the rear view mirror. Yeah. I did actually recently have a client tell me as well that she's managed to um, slowly, gradually lower and then come off her antidepressant tablets um, thanks to attending the yoga classes. Um, so, you know, it's not that we're recommending people to come off them immediately, um, but it can, it can help. It, can it help. does help people, yeah. um, you know, finding another solution. There's maybe antidepressants you wouldn't want to take for a lifetime. Um, but yoga is something that you could introduce into your life for a lifetime and have it as part of your lifestyle. And help. And once again, that rider generally that if you're watching the program, which you obviously are, yeah. and you're not too stressed, do yeah. not suddenly cease your medication. No. <laughs> if you're going to do anything, remember this is no substitute for professional medical advice and please seek the advice of a qualified medical practitioner. Mm. But stress... Fear, the other one that was isolated using CT scans a few years ago, is that there is such a thing as dread. Mm. And there's a difference between fear and dread. You know, and we use that word very lightly, don't we? Oh, God, you know, I dread going to the dentist today. But it actually sums the situation up better than being afraid. Yeah, so it ties in with anxiety. Like yeah. People have panic attacks or like certain anxieties, agoraphobia mm. or... I don't, there's all these phobias, aren't there? Yeah. Say, well, I have this phobia and I have that phobia. Tax and, you know, man phobia. You know, there should be a mobile phone phobia now because we're all stuck to those. And those are huge aggravators of stress yeah. uh, because well, we don't switch off. People are working seven days a week, 24 7, whether it's socially or, or you know, with their jobs. And then they're on their phone. And yeah. I mean, and, a know, lot of people have their phones on at night. <clears> they like buy their yeah. bed, they sleep, their phone's still on. So first thing in the morning, the phone's there. It's just it's yeah. like where our alarms are. Social on. media takes mm -hmm. over their lives. Yeah. Panic attacks, more and more I, I, um, I see people who are suffering with panic attacks and you know and that's what they want is something and something as simple as a rescue remedy or an emergency essence, you know, they come in a bottle like this, this isn't one but it's just a dropper bottle and, um, and you just either put the drops on your tongue or under your tongue mm -hmm. or you can add them to water and put them in your water bottle and carry that around with you and just keep sipping. They're great for things like shock. Really, right really good. You don't even notice. People say, oh, I didn't even notice, you know, whether it worked or not. When I said, well, did you have a panic attack or were you anxious? No. So it doesn't work in that you don't feel an effect, but you just it's a feel is normal. You just feel... Yeah. Right. You cope. You cope. And that's what it's all about. How do you mm. cope with stress? Because we all have stresses, as yeah. we said and at the beginning of the show. Obviously, eating right. And as we go back to the digestive, having, you know, avoiding things like gluten and sugar, and they're probably the two main things that upset the digestive system. And it is important to have your digestive system working if you don't want to suffer things like um, serotonin rushes mm. and... Um, and, and living off stimulants such as caffeine mm -hmm. or alcohol mm -hmm. or tobacco. I'm intrigued with this pink thing that's on oh, the yes. table. Let me demonstrate. Let's put our arms There's a, a round. <laughs> this long is just a very simple. You know, we're talking about some some things that are quite complicated for people that don't know what they are. Of course, you know, write into us, email us, uh, and ask more about some of these things. We will go into more detail, won't we, in, in other programs about different types of homeopathy and. Yeah. And, and the, um, the complementary medicines that you can take. This is a pretty simple one. You can pick it up normally in a natural um, uh, natural shop. What do you call them? Uh, Health shop. Health shop. Health shop. Health shop. <laughs> or a pharmacy. They were filming, yeah. Yeah. filming from, from another country, so yeah, I'm translating as I go. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it's, it's got um, soybeans in it, perhaps. Sometimes there's ceramic beans. It's made of material. It's all pink and fluffy. Uh, sometimes they smell of lavender, which can be lovely, and you can um, pop it in the microwave or in the oven, depending on what is inside it. Gas uh, mark. Uh, no, electric oven, I think. Right. Would be the best thing. <laughs> yeah. You can either put it in the oven. They're better off in the microwave. No, right. don't like microwaves. They're not I don't very have a microwave. But for, for the purpose of these, they are fantastic, because you mm. pop it in for two minutes, and then you whack it on your neck like this. And it, it's really, really hot, and if you've got a really stressed, uptight neck, it helps all the muscles Soon relax. Down. And the aroma of lavender comes out, and it's fantastic. So that's what our little pink fluffy 
Toy is there. <laughs> and, and I would just like to say that uh, being in contact with nature is really important if you're stressed. I think if you mm, can get definitely. out into nature, take a walk along the beach, a walk in the park, along the river, just, you know, breathe in deeply because we all breathe up here and you need to kind of breathe in really deeply down into your belly and, and exhale a few times. Oh, and walking, uh, swinging the yeah, arts, which is a thing that people do not do. Yeah. Yeah. They don't yeah. walk, right? They get up and exercise, exercise, walk around the office. Yeah, take know, regular breaks from the computer. Stretch your arms over your head. Um, any kind of gentle stretching, I think, is a very good way of mm -hmm. waking up, relaxing the body, relaxing the muscles. Yeah. Change position a little bit before you sit down and carry on with your work. And thinking of waking up, the other <clears> problem, of course, is how it affects your sleep pattern. And people often have problems with getting to sleep or they're waking up in the middle of the night. So what do you feel that we have to offer for that? Well, I love herbs. herbs but, yeah, um, sleepy time teas. You often have sort of herbal things in like chamomile and chamomile. Um, melissa. I don't yeah. know what the other ones Passion are. Passionflower, um, tilia. Um, Just help the natural. Yeah. Um, Valerian. Relax. Valerian. Yeah. Very effective. I mean, chamomile tea is even mentioned in Peter Rabbit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When he gets back from being attacked by Mr. McGregor, <laughs> Mrs. Rabbit gives him a cup of chamomile tea mm. to calm him down. And also, yeah. lettuce has a soporific effect. Does it really? Soporific means it makes sleep you sleepy. I didn't know that until I read Peter Rabbit and I had to look at the words. <laughs> so this is why he was trying to steal <laughs> Mr. McGregor's lettuce. Yes. And cabbages. Well, this is why he often fell asleep in the lettuce patch. <laughs> right. So we, <laughs> the yeah. so we have a lot to learn from Peter Rabbit. <laughs> wow. There yeah. are a particular uh, really series of yoga poses. There's, there's a particular right. series of yoga poses as well that you can do uh, before bedtime, leading up to bedtime, mm. that are less stimulating and more relaxing for the system. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe we could do a, a separate issue or a video on that, and, or put something on Facebook. Hmm. What's it called at the end of yoga? When I love that bit where you wrap up in a blanket, shavasana, shavasana. Yeah. So you wrap yeah. in a blanket at the yeah. end of having done yeah, what you've done. Yeah, you've got done. your cushion under your head, and you've been doing all that exercise and stretching. Mm -hmm. Get your big fat socks on as well, so they're all nice and cozy. The feet. Oh. And then you take the, you normally take us through like yoga a, nidra, a, yeah, like a meditation, yeah. Yeah. where you, you you focus on parts of the body, so it kind of stops your brain going off and thinking about the shopping mm -hmm. and who's, who you're picking up from school, and you're you're really just sort of focusing on your big toe and then your knee, and you know you come around the whole body, don't you, and and put your mind, your consciousness into that part of the body, right, whilst breathing deeply. So it depends on your fun class, though. Yeah. Not every shavasana, stuff like that. That's not. Like a standard rest. Okay, no, so that's, that's, that, that's the one I've experienced. Yeah, 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 sure, yeah. But normally you have a relaxation at the yeah, end. You always have yeah, five to eight minute <clears throat> at the end, yeah. But with this, we're talking about on the physical plane, then there's also the emotional plane, but also what are called the talking cures psychotherapy, counseling, so that people can talk about their problems, yes. which is incredibly important. Relaxation exercise, breathing. Yeah. Talking is that a part that of the treatment? Isn't very helpful, is it? Like when you're suppressing things, that's probably going to cause a lot of stress. Mm. So what you're saying, talking, getting it out. Yeah. And, you know. But talking in that sense of what they call the talking cures, the Freudian approach, Jung. Yes, yeah, so and then there's other um, others that would say things like um, talking about it just reinforces it, and you're you're trying to find a solution. Mm within you know your own head basically and um, so you, you need to be able to just have a little crack so that a new thought can come in or a new insight can come now in. how could you do that how could you do that kate help me out here. <laughs> <laughs> how could you do that and you are only really one thought away from having a different experience so you know, every experience, if you're feeling very, say you're feeling very sad, somebody's left you, you're heartbroken. I think there's the ability, we have this ability, when we were at conferences this weekend and we talked a lot about resilience, we have this ability to switch that thought. So you can be like, oh, poor me, I'm going to be by myself for the rest of my life. Or you could be like, this is a window of opportunity. Like if we monitor our thoughts, which is where also mindfulness comes in, when we're watching how our thought patterns are, if we can take ourselves, the personal, out, this is a very you know, meditative meditation hmm. technique as well, we can take ourselves out and watch how we are, which isn't always easy in the moment, <clears throat> I'm not saying it's very simple, we can see that we actually, there's choice. We have choice in how we view 
or how we are feeling about ourselves. Right, but if somebody's in the depths of despair, stressed by money, they've got the tax man on the back, mm. they yes. haven't worked for a few weeks, their wife's just left them, their car <laughs> needs repairing and they haven't got the money, and everything's getting on top of them. What can people do as an immediate tell you thing? Just a story about myself. I, I was really in the depths of bawling, crying one time over a heartbreak. Okay, let's say. And um, I look really so, so ripped up, torn up, painful, crying, crying, crying. And as I was in the depths of crying, I just opened my eyes and I noticed a piece of dust on the coffee table. And I just did that. And then I went, oh yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, the depths of depression. Uh, depths of despair, but went back to bawling and crying. But it wasn't quite the same as the first bawling and crying because I noticed something there that something had, had, distracted. had distracted me. A new thought came in, <clears throat> and I wasn't in the depths of despair, I was cleaning the dust. So, um, and then I went back to the depths of despair, but it wasn't, it didn't feel as good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Some it's drastic. So, it's uh, a so, yeah, so, I think. Yeah. So it's it just, pity. you know, let, let, let that thought come in. Don't keep going back. Just and notice that a notice thought did come in, and then you went back to that, and then you moved on to this thought. Um, but just notice that your thoughts are changing and your feeling is changing with the thought. But imagine that person who's got this whole pile of different problems. They may be heartbroken, their wife's left them, money problems. My best advice is take things one step at a time. And that was very good advice I was given at a very difficult time in my life as well. It was just take from an older, an older senior person with lots of... Um, Breakup issues. Behind <laughs> them, yeah. And he just said, oh, I just don't know what to do, I don't know where to start. And he just said, just take, take it one step at a time. You can't... Do all of you can't deal with all of the problems at once. The main thing is, is don't do it on your own. If if you can, you know, try and find somebody to talk to, seek out professional advice. Um, you know, if, if you're in a really really bad place, obviously don't carry on in that really bad place without seeking professional advice and and, and talking to a good friend or something. Mm. I suppose. Although unfortunately, friends can <clears throat> give the wrong advice sometimes, which doesn't always help. But not the problems down like skittles. So imagine it's 10 pin bowling, knock each one down. You may not get all 10 down at once, yeah, but... Just focus on one, yeah, focus on the easiest that. one to deal yeah. with, and then maybe move on to the next one. And, and talk. If, if you will fall away, you, you yeah. think they're all separate, but a lot of them are connected. So, you know, you, you, you just you just need to take a step and, and just pick one, it doesn't matter which one, and just deal with that, and a few others will fall. Yeah. I mean, yoga plays a huge part in all of this, in terms of being a very effective way <clears throat> of helping people. I mean, you see a lot of people who are stressed. Everybody's stressed, but really stressed. Yeah, no, no, no. There's always people that come who are, who are you know, they, they carry stress. Well, that's how we are now. We are very stressed, you know. I mean, sorry, just going back to like what, what you were talking about, like, I, I feel like, you know, somebody once said to me, if you don't know what to do, don't do anything. Which is very sensible. Which advice. is like, okay, don't and don't make decisions in that stress or that panic place. Yeah. You know, it will it will come. You will find. You know, I mean, and as as you were saying, one thing at a time. Don't yeah. try and figure out all the problems because it just it's just stresses. And the more stressed we are, the less we right. can figure stuff so out. So seek advice. The physical treatments such as yoga are very effective. And there's one thing which is breathing. So shall we end? <laughs> On this stressful note, oh, with this breath. breathing exercise, so I have a clue what I'm doing. So we take a very deep breath. So we take a very deep breath. So lead us in yeah. very quickly. Yeah, so breathing in deep into your lungs, inhaling, and then nice deep exhale, expelling all of that sail air. And we've expelled time for the health show on expatlive.tv, so stress, how to conquer it. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon.